Welcome back to Vintage Diecast Restoration. Uh, up this week, we have a number 50 uh, Matchbox Series John Deere tractor. Uh, as you can see, I've got a few different copies of this model. This one, um, they're all in various states of disrepair playwear. Uh, this one, you can see we're missing the rear tires. Those are something that I can order uh, reproductions of. Uh, it's also missing the steering wheel. I may have to uh, give a shout out to Marty. I think he can uh, hook me up with the steering wheel and some barrels um, from his 3D printer. Um, this one, you can see the paint is actually in really good shape on this. Um, not mint, but you know, pretty pretty well um, taken care of. This has uh, the gray rear wheels but I'm missing the gray front wheels. Um, and I really haven't been able to find a good aftermarket source for those, uh, especially not in the United States. So um, if anybody knows where I can get the correct sized gray wheels for the John Deere tractors, please do uh, reach out in the comments section, let me know. And then this one here, you can see um, also fairly play worn, uh, missing all the tires in this case. Um, and the base is actually a little bit loose on this one, uh, but we do have the original steering wheel intact. And then last but not least, and what we'll be working on today is the restoration of this box. Um, you can see when I got this in, it came with uh, kind of masking tape, I'm guessing it is, wrapping around this end of the box. So we're gonna see what we can do uh, to try to repair this original box as best as we can. Um, I'm going to attempt to remove this masking tape um, and eventually uh, re replace it with a, a reproduction and flat. To remove the, uh, the masking tape, um, I'm gonna try a method that I've never seen used on cardboard before, but I've seen it used um, on other toys and other packages. Uh, to try to dissolve the adhesive here without impacting the image. Um, and to do that, I'm going to use a little lighter fluid. Um, I ordered this on Amazon, I think it was six or eight bucks, um, and definitely enough in here to last me through several uh, restorations. So to start this, um, I'm gonna see if I can get just any part of this that's already loose. You can kind of see this corner's already coming up a bit. Um, and as I pull on that, I want to be very gentle because I don't want to take any of the color on this box with it. So all I really need to do is just to get a start, um, a way that I can start to get some of my lighter fluid underneath that adhesive. So what I'm going to do is just soak the cotton bud in that. And I'm just gonna start working it very gently down along that little edge flap that I was able to raise. Now the advantage of using lighter fluid over any other type of adhesive remover um, is in the past when I've tried products like say Goof Off or Goo Gone, um, they definitely dissolve the adhesives. Unfortunately, they also dissolve all of the inks that are also on the cardboard. Um, and since these are original boxes and we want to try to keep them in as close to original condition as we can, you know, dissolving and ruining all the printing and the inks off of them kind of defeats the, the purpose of what we're trying to do. Um, and lighter fluid is the, about the only thing I've found that seems to have an effect on the adhesives, but not on the inks that are underneath. Another advantage to the lighter fluid um, is that it evaporates. So my box doesn't get saturated. I don't have to worry about things running um, or you know soaking the box and potentially ruining the box. Um, when I get all the adhesive loose and I get the tape removed, I'll be able to just let it sit and um, any discoloration I have in the surface of the box or in the ink, it will eventually go away as the, the lighter fluid evaporates. 
Um, you do want to be careful. I'm doing this in a very well ventilated room. There are some fumes from it um, that you don't really want to breathe. And of course, this is ladder fluid. It's extremely flammable. So probably you know don't want to do this in a uh, shop space or uh, next to anything flammable or anything that could cause it to ignite. So as you can see, I'm working very slowly along here. You want to reapply new fluid as is necessary just to kind of continue working along that adhesive and getting that to loosen its grip. Let loose. Now you'll notice we have a few spots on this box where there's still some residual adhesive that was left behind. And I can go over those just very gently with, I don't know, all, all my Aussie and UK friends call these cotton buds. In the States we call them Q-tips. So, you can see. So we've got almost all of that adhesive now removed from that surface. And then as the end becomes kind of saturated with junk adhesive, I can flip it over. And I use the other side to kind of dry it off, make sure that everything is clear from that area. Um, and then, you know, these are cheap and they're disposable. So I can drop that one and move to a new one as we start moving down the end flaps. As you can see, I was able to remove that old piece of masking tape that was on the end of the box. So now have a tape-free um, original box. Gone ahead and unfold, uh, unfolded that. Um, so my plan, uh, and again, I've never attempted this before, so this is going to be all brand new to me. Uh, but my plan is to uh, scan 
with a very high resolution um, digital scanner this end flap of the box here um, and try to size it and scale it and then recreate my missing end flap on this side. Um, I may also see what I can do since I've got really nice clear artwork um, on this side of the box. I may see what I can do to try to restore some of these areas that are no doubt probably torn off uh, due to some previous uh, tape action on there. So. so I've had a few days to think about how I wanted to go about uh, restoring this end flap and fixing some of this torn artwork on the, the front of the box. And I decided that the, the first thing, the first logical thing to do was to try to get as good of a scan of my existing box as I could. So I took an, an unfolded box and I laid it down on the glass on my home scanner. Um, it's nothing crazy. It's a, uh, about a 600 DPI scan. And I took scans of both sides of the box. Um, this side obviously so I could get the uh, end flap and then this side obviously so I could get the uh, side of the box artwork. I was able to take those scans into Photoshop and manipulate them into a composite image um, that is an unfolded version of a regular box. So this flap matches here, this flap matches here, the bottom flap matches here, and the back of the box with the missing flap here. Um, I didn't do, you know, I didn't want to take this box apart. I didn't do the little end flap that would normally be tucked inside. This was really done as a kit of parts, really, that I could cut or use any of these pieces that I needed um, to repair any part of a box that might be missing. And so this was my first image um, that I put together. All in all, I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, the only drawback or only negative or complaint I can really make about this is that my blues uh, didn't quite match up. Um, I was actually really happy with the yellows. The yellows were almost exact, but the, the blues were a little off and my greens were not quite as bright as I wanted. This is a little more dull, muted, kind of a, an olive green and, you know, not a John Deere green. So I knew my image was good. Uh, all I was really dealing with was color correction. And so I made a few adjustments in Photoshop to try to get that closer. So this one definitely got a little bit darker, but still not quite green enough. As I got to this one, we're definitely getting much closer with the green, but the blue was getting a little bit into the wrong color. Here you can see I went way too far from where I wanted to be. <laughs> this is way, way too dark. Um, the green looks much better. Uh, the green and yellow is actually really great. Um, but the blue is just a complete miss. So I dialed that back a little bit. I got to this copy, which the green looks really good. The blue is awfully close. It's still not quite there. But we're definitely, you know, in the right range of where we want it to be. And my final copy that I've ended up with is this set here, where my yellows look really good, the green is almost an exact match, and my blue is probably about as close as I'm going to be able to get it on the, the printers that I'm using right now. So. I'm really, really happy with this. Um, so this is what I'm gonna use for my replacement end flap. And to do that, I'm just going to cut out only the parts, really only the parts that I need um, from this box. And I printed this on a pretty heavy duty 
uh, paper. Um, it's, I don't know, we call it cover in the office. It's got a, a pretty, you know, thick weight to it. Um, I'm sure if I go look at the package, I can actually figure out what it, exactly what it is. But um, what I actually did was I went through several different papers and I just held them up against my existing box to see how close they came, you know, in the thickness of my end flap with the thickness of my paper. The other thing I wanted to account for is, you know, this is not our final product. This is actually going to get backed with my paper tape when I make the attachment. So I wanted something that was really, really close to the thickness of the original box um, and would still leave me enough room that as I add that paper tape backing to it, that it would be about right. So here you can see our original box end flap and my reproduction box end flap. Um, so that looks pretty good. I'm going to trim off this end here. And I know I won't need all of this. I can you know, trim this up anywhere, really. So this is the piece that I need. And rather than you know just cutting along here, what I actually want to do is do a quick test fit with this box and kind of line it up, you know, pretty close to where I think that's that's going to be. And then I want to mark that um, along that edge. And because I don't want to do anything to the original box, um, I think the easiest way for me to mark that is just going to be with a little pencil line. Once I've got my pencil line, I want to very carefully cut along the shape of that line. And what I'm trying to do is actually account for kind of the uneven edge of the tear in that original box. So with those cuts, now you can see I've got replacement flap that matches perfectly along that cut edge. So the next thing to do is to prepare this to attach. So I've got a piece of the adhesive backed paper tape uh, that I use for my box repairs. Um, I do have links for this in the description. A few, a few of you have asked where you can get that. Um, and this is actually what we're going to use to attach these two together. You'll also see it'll give the back of the new flap um, the brown cardboard look of the original box to help hide the fact that this piece is a replacement. So in order to make that stick, um, got a kitchen sponge with a little water on it, just get that damp. And then, because I want that to come all the way out, I'm actually going to place it about there on the box. That looks pretty good. And then I will trim off any of the excess tape from my new flap. I 
want to do a quick test fit to make sure that that fits really nice and seamless. That's actually looking pretty good. Pretty, pretty happy with that. Um, so in order to get that to stick, that other half wet. And I'm be very careful to line up. little pieces want that to try to be as seamless and smooth as I can get it and then I'm gonna put this under a weight just to let it sit and dry smooth and I'll come back when that's had a chance to set Our box has had a few minutes now to kind of dry. So the last thing I want to do to complete that end flap repair is just press that. Uh, again, I'm using a regular household iron with a medium heat setting and just want to help that tape to go off and get all of that adhesive. Um, really set on that paper tape. So that actually looks pretty good. And that completes our repair of our box and flat. Before I bend this, I want to make sure and kind of learn this through trial and error that to bend this the first time, I want to bend it against a straight metal edge. Um, so what I'm going to do is line that up with the crease mark in the artwork. And I'm just going to kind of score a little edge. Give me something to kind of break that paper against. And line that up on the back side. We'll do first fold around that metal straight edge. And last, you want to get a good bend here at our joint. That one's going to end up a little bit easier because those are two separate pieces. So, there we go. And we have our replacement end flap on the box. And that actually looks like it's pretty good. So the next thing that we need to tackle is what to do about these rips on the surface of the box. And honestly, having never done anything like this before, I really needed to do some research. And what I found is that a lot of times for especially important historical documents or artifacts, when they get a rip or tear, they'll replace or they'll uh, reproduce the artwork that's on there on a translucent uh, layer of material, sometimes linen or muslin or very light tissue. Um, the only material that I have that I'm familiar working with that's similar to that is this. Um, this is trace paper. Um, sometimes it's called bum wad or tissue, um, but it's a translucent paper um, that's used uh, to, you know, overlay different designs. And it's something I, I work with all the time in my day job. So what I did was I took one of my test prints that had an area for the artwork 
and I took a blank sheet and I taped down over the area of the print um, a layer of this trace. And then I ran it back through my printer and what I was left with was a copy of the print of my artwork that is on that translucent material. So this is what I'm gonna use to try to restore these torn areas um, on my original box. Now that I've had a chance to apply a little bit of glue only to the torn areas, I'm going to try to only repair those areas first. It, you know, worst comes to worst, and I have to do an overlay of the whole piece. I, I still have uh, an extra of this, but that was my goal: was to try to restore just the ripped areas only on the box. So. To start, I'm gonna to try to do that. And one of the nice properties of this trace material is once it comes into contact with any water, moisture, glue, any sort of liquid, um, it kind of turns translucent or transparent. So I think once this has had a chance to dry, um, all the new printing that we put on the trace uh, should hardly be noticeable. Now that our tissue has had a little bit of a chance to dry and I've gone in and trimmed off all of the excess anywhere where I had good artwork on the box. Um, so that's left me just with repairs only in the areas that were, were torn um, and those have all been now glued. So the last step in this is to just do a final press of the box. Now I do want to be careful especially on my repaired sections um, because the printer that I used to do these is a laser printer so it uses toner not ink and toner is heat reactive so as I kind of go over this 
just to firmly set everything that's there. I, I want to move a little bit quicker than maybe I would um, to press a normal box. That's also the reason that I wanted to get this mostly all done and pressed uh, before I made the repairs to the, the torn areas. But as you can see, um, I'm actually pretty happy with the, the results of the restored artwork on the front here. The, the big white tears that were running all the way down the box um, are, you know, not invisible. I mean, it, it doesn't, you know, by any means look as good as this side of the box, but, you know, maybe this is the back side. And uh, at least when I put it up on display, um, I'm not staring at a ripped, torn box, you know. Uh, you can see the original artwork over the entire thing. And, uh, of course, you know, one of the best parts is you now I have both end flaps uh, complete on the box. So that concludes our box restoration on the Matchbox Series number 50. John Deere tractor. Um, I will have some future videos uh, that go through the restoration of the tractor model. Um, I've got one set of black wall tires coming um, and I'm still on the hunt for the, uh, the grays for the older model. So uh, when I find those, I will shoot the restoration video for the tractors. As always, uh, don't forget to like our channel, uh, comment below on anything you think I did right or wrong, um, any tips or suggestions. I do read all the comments and try to respond to them if I can. And uh, most importantly, don't forget to subscribe so you can catch all of our future and upcoming videos.